Ladies and gentlemen, people of the world, welcome to another episode of Stretch and Fade. First and foremost, rest in peace, the juice. OJ, he is gone. Juice is OJ Simpson died? Yeah, he died today. Or is but it how did he die? Do you know? Uh cancer, apparently. No. Oh, that's unfortunate. He got in his white Bronco and just kept on driving. All the angels are following him, following him all the way to heaven. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo. My name is Stretch. This is the last time you mess with Stretch. Ah! Ah! Fade. The memes are pretty good. They're making me chuckle. It's all these like uh, OJ trying to get into heaven. It's just that a clip of that Jets player trying to like go into the building and his code doesn't work. No oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's such, that's such a fucked up way to tell that you're fired. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of see. <laughs> you got up in the morning. You're like, today's gonna be a good day. No, it's not. Yeah, the, your like, secret access code to a professional facility no longer works. It must be <laughs> fucking devastating, dude. Yeah, highly exclusive sporting franchise that very few people ever get to play for. Your code does not work anymore. That's crazy though. I didn't know. I didn't know OJ died. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, um, he lived a long, fruitful life, dude. Oh, he did. He will be remembered for his time in professional sports. And who could forget, and I don't want to emphasize this enough, how amazing he is in Top Gun. Yeah. Or, or Naked Gun, my bad. Yeah. Naked Gun. Yeah, they they brought Very a, good. that clip of him uh, going down the stairs and doing the flip. <laughs> what a scene. What mm. a scene. <laughs> it's good stuff, man. Hey, rest in peace to a real angel, man. <laughs> rest in peace. I, thank God I have a signed copy of If I Did It. Yeah. I went to the tour. I gave him a little handshake. I winked at him. I said, come on, man. I know the truth. And he winked back and he was like, that's right. And then yeah, I, he's did. just like, you know, innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. Right. And they ain't prove it. Exactly. Well, they proved his innocence. I, I mean, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. By it, I meant, you know, <laughs> I love I love this cover of this book. If I did it, I like how the if is just like almost Mad it's small. borderline, borderline, uh, not even like legible on the fucking book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope they reprint this book and they just fade out that if. They gotta if. do a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, I gotta know. I gotta know what this gift is. Keep going. <laughs> Oh, I'll wait for I'll wait for you, dude. I'm looking at you and what you're doing, man. And here I thought this is gonna be a booster pack of magic cards. Was just it's uh oh, this is nice from the brand Tushy Travel. Jesus it's, Christ! It's a uh... do people wrap this stuff on like? For like does the crew wrap this or do they send it to us with a fucking wrapping like this um no the brand wraps it dude the ceo hand wraps it that's not true oh look at that it's a little um it's a thermos you fill it with water and then you just spray it in your mouth <laughs> what the fuck is this is this a douche for your asshole yeah you could douche your ass with this Looks about the size of my cock. About that right there? No, no, no. Yeah, the nib. There you go. Oh, the nib. Got it, got it. This right here. Mm-hmm. This is the size of your dick right here? Absolutely. On a good day. That's pretty easy. I could do that. I can handle that. No problem. That's what every prostitute I've ever bought said. <laughs> that must be... <laughs> That's how you got to wear it on you. You know, you hire a sex worker and you whip it out and she's like, oh, pfft. Easy work. You're like, I'm saying. Oh, easy money. Come on. I'm I'm every prostitute's best friend, dude. 
<clears throat> best customer. <laughs> best customer for sure. <laughs> I think- hear we're going to our new channel soon. We, we are, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to the new channel, um, Stretch and Fade, and it's just going to be the greatest experience ever. So go subscribe, youtube.com slash at stretch and fade. At- Noah, can they expect regular kind of YouTube uploads as well along with the podcast? Or is that just idea? Are we out of that? We, we're not doing that. <laughs> we can try, but daddy has a few more tour dates, but we hope to do that. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not saying anything consistent, but I'm just saying, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Because you know what's kind of fucked up nowadays is all these fucking, all these goddamn podcast YouTube channels, and it's nothing but just podcast episodes. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have all these, you have all this production, you have all this stuff, and you can't, you know, that's, that's why I like when you and Cody do the, uh, the, the Noel and Cody do. Yeah. Or whatever. I, th- I think that's a great, you know what? Utilize the platform. Yeah. Maybe it's a video, video platform. Why not? I, yeah, so that you can expect a regular podcast and um, intermittent auxiliary uploads. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even tease that. I do not know how much faith I have in that. If they're intermittent, yeah, we're we're, we're gonna try. We're gonna definitely try i wouldn't even i wouldn't even put that out there i don't even know how much faith i have in us even saying that we're gonna hope uh, for 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 me and noel the scariest three letter word is t-r-y <laughs> <Try. laughs> <laughs> because it, it gives the that we're gonna give the slightest semblance of of effort and then i blink and six months goes by and i'm like well that that we really shit the bed on that no, nah, dude, we're gonna, we're gonna hope, okay. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna put this thing on its own channel to see which one of these, which one of the fucking little piggies that watches our show decides to show up to the fucking slaughterhouse. Yeah, every week. Yep. Okay. That's that's the plan. So head on over to at Stretch and Fade. You can follow us there. Um, we'll be uh, we'll update you when the first episode on that channel comes out but yes go subscribe and yeah um it's gonna be fun it's gonna be great it's gonna be it's this it's gonna be so insane <laughs> it's gonna be absolutely out of this world dude. i really hope that our only sponsor moving forward is totino's i think we can make that happen that's all i want in my life dude totino's Just to pizza be a rolls. totino's a Totino's partnered e celeb. Yeah, we got to lock in a, a deal like when Post was locked in with Bud Light. We got to get that for Totino's. Yeah, um, yeah. Because everywhere, then every every party I'm going to, I'm having either a handful of pizza rolls. I'm having, <laughs> yep. I'm having, I, I have a full square <laughs> party pizza that I'm munching on. <laughs> if you do any kind of live performance. Yeah, you know, there will be someone's going to walk one out. Yep. Yeah, there will be microwaves that are continuously cooking perfectly cooked t- pizza rolls. And it's going to be great. And Totino's, if you're out there, I don't care what I have to do. I want it. I want it and I need it. He'll and I want it to pay very well. He'll do anything. And hey, this is a this is a multi-platinum recording artist that you're you're hearing from. So if I if if I was a brand ambassador, how much do you think like Post Malone gets for Bud Light? Uh, I would guess a dude like him, where he's touring and he's always drinking it and he's always visible with it. I would guess honestly at least five million a year. It's pretty good. Well, if I if if I did the exact same thing, because my social status, I don't know how much longer it's going to be at what it's at. Which you know, it's not like it's it. Well, it's not that high. I mean, you're on the Jake Paul album, dude. That's pretty high. <clears throat> well, and people are already rolling that motherfucker, so that's like not. I can't even brag about that anymore. So there you go. <laughs> if I sat there and uh, if I it, with where I was at now, what do you think I could realistically get for a five year deal with Totino's? If I was like, it's going to be in everything. 
If on every upload I did, I'm eating a full Totino's party pizza every upload. Yeah. What do you think I would get? I honestly, I honestly think you could get away with a quarter to a half a million a year. I really believe oh. that. I really believe that. Oh, make it happen, dude. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break and thank the, uh, the sponsor of today's episode, Liquid IV. I love riding my bike in the night air, jumping into salty seas, and, well, not having an agenda. With that summer feeling running wild, the one that Hunter knows so well when he goes out for a bike ride, you need hydration that keeps up with every moment. A single stick of Liquid IV makes ordinary hydration extra ordinary. With three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drinks, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. I like Liquid IV for the convenience, the sugar-free flavors, and how easy it is. My favorite flavor is grapefruit. Liquid IV is perfect for before, during, and after workouts because it helps replenish electrolytes. It's so easy to stay hydrated while you travel, and you can carry extra packets on you for friends and family. Liquid IV is the number one powered hydration brand in America. Again, it has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink. All you have to do is tear, pour, and live more. Because one stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates you better than water alone. Liquid IV is non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. and has no artificial colors or sweeteners. Try their four delicious sugar-free flavors. White peach, green grape, raspberry melon, and lemon lime. Turn your ordinary water into extraordinary hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code STRETCH at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code STRETCH at liquidiv.com. Where the fuck, like, where the fuck is that Totino's deal, dude? <laughs> Tired of doing all these goddamn deals. I I'm want just, Totinos. I just picture you laid out by a pool in a fucking oh. shirt covered in dice, open, smoking a cigar on a wired I have, phone. I would have a... Well, you actually, you know what? what's kind of cool about this concept is that if I had a pool in the shape of a Totino's party pizza, it would ah, be the go. exact same shape of a regular pool. <laughs> there you go. So that, that, that works out very well for me. <laughs> But all my floaties in the pool would be giant plastic yep, pepperonis. Yep. Yep. Huh? Damn. Not bad. You just walk in your house, all the carpet's red. <laughs> all the carpet is marinara red. <laughs> I have those little Febreze, like, timed dusters that spit out cheese and grease and kind of, like, beautiful Totino's smelling things. Yeah. And at all yep. times, there's a party platter with piping hot Totino's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, borderline one of those things where it's not as bad as a hot pocket, but it is one of those surprise ones where you definitely like you you grab it and you're like this is going to be hot and you bite into it and all the grease and yeah uh, sauce just shoots out and burns the inside of your mouth. Yeah, how like how many of the, how many of these do you think you could body in a sitting? Well, Totino's what? what do yeah, you mean? like the little Which one, little pizza rolls. Like how many? How many pizza other? rolls? Shit, dog. I remember I used to watch that guy. I remember when there was uh, there was like an epic cringe video that was uh, uh, this guy speed eating forty pizza rolls, which uh, was like a full bag. Yeah, yeah. It was like a really popular cringe video online, and I was like, I could do that in my sleep. Yeah. You if I had to guess, in one sitting or throughout the day, one sitting, hundred and fifty. Damn, I want to hold you to that. I want to see 150 pizza rolls. Will I ever actually do that? No, because if I succeed, I will have to fucking, <laughs> I'll blow my brains out. <laughs> Bro, you, you try, you tried all those fucking mac and cheeses. You tried all those TV I took dinner. a bite, dude. I took a bite. You think the bite of a those? A baby bite. You think the bite of those was bigger than the pizza roll? No. No. There's no way. I think at the beginning there was, and then I realized very quickly, I'm like, these are, these bites are way too big. I see. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a really funny video. If you go to youtube.com uh, forward slash Papa Meat and you go to ranking every TV dinner, you can actually watch that right now. It's a very good video. So feel free. Feel, feel free. free to check that I like out. how um, if you go if you scroll through my Papa Meat channel, which I do love doing, and ev everyone who goes there and supports me there, that is my main revenue of money. So if you do watch that, I care about you more than anyone else. More than anyone else. Absolutely. And uh, it's like a giant 
It's insane to think that I'm like 42 and making these videos. I mean, I feel disgusted with myself, dude. Yeah, but you know, you you keep the energy up, and it's this is what keeps you young, tapped in with the youth. I mean, this is uh, that's why I'm honestly, and I'll be honest, dude, I'm afraid to lose so much weight because I know as soon as I start, it's like when Rob McElhenney, whatever for Mac from It's Always Sunny, when he got buff, yeah, he looks like he looks like the fucking Crypt Keeper now. Yeah, he's old, and I'm like, this is a young man's game. I gotta be, I'm gonna, I gotta pull a Dan Nine in, and I gotta just lie to everybody, being like, dude, I'm 25. Man. And if you're fat, it's easier to do that because fat don't crack. Yeah, but Dan wasn't lying. Dan was telling the truth. Dan was lying. Dan no, was lying. He was telling the truth, man. He was 25. Dan is 63 years old. <laughs> nah, dude, come on. He's 21. He's yeah. 21. You yeah. couldn't tell by I, his I, material he's 21? I did think it was funny. He was 54, and he was lying that he was 32. <laughs> and he got in all the on all these articles, which if you guys don't know, Dan Ninen is a... Stand-up comedian who basically, uh, he just lies about his age so he can get in on younger shows and stuff, but he also is like a clean comic Yeah, because he said he said he, he did a set in front of Jerry Seinfeld, and then after the set, Jerry came up and said, what's up with all the swearing? Get, get Keep it clean, which is a funny thing that you, t- Jerry Seinfeld would ever say that. What's up shit. with all the swearing? But... Uh, Dan Dan Ninen was very he's like a corporate comic he goes and like companies will pay to have companies will pay a shit ton of money to have stand up comedians come and do events yeah so like that's why the the comedians will never post about it because it's like supposed to be kind of embarrassing it's like yeah. kind of like a sellout gig but you get paid a lot and Dan that's like his bread and butter and he always jo- and then his big thing is he tells people that he's flying in private jets he's eating steak on jets he shows you he has two teslas two tesla keys it's like a big thing um and then just kind of scummy stuff where oh yeah his testimonials at the bottom of his website it's like Barack obama saying like this is the funniest guy ever or like hillary clinton which, which it's like who, who like who who gives a fuck what Barack obama thinks is funny Dude, Motherfuckers come not on. telling jokes on stage. Who cares? Nah, come on, dude? man. Like, it, it's it's a massively elevating your profile when a dead, politician no, yeah. thinks you're hilarious. But there's a great uh there's a great um video by Oki's Weird Stories on YouTube. Uh, and he has a great Dan Ninen video. And I was, I was that's like the quintessential Dan Ninen video. I was gonna make my own Dan Ninen video, but I was like, this I'm just saying everything that this guy's already said. So yeah. it's a great fucking video. Yeah, well, shout out Dan, man, if you ever want to come on the show. <laughs> yeah, Dan, I didn't, uh, you better watch out. Better not show that motherfucker on the screen. He'll, uh, he'll sue you, bro. Yeah. Um. Anyways, man, yeah, 42, bro. You're killing it, though. You're Hell yeah. It. 42 years young. You're locked in, man. Uh, Going on a Disney cruise soon with my cousins. They all, they, they're all not doing too well, so we're going on a cruise soon. Got the Mickey suite. They're just big Disney heads, so we're going to go out there and do that for about three weeks. That would be awesome, man. How much time do they have left? All right, they're not dying. They're just not doing very well. Two oh, of them okay. are blind. Two okay. of them are blind from diabetes. Mm. And uh, one of them one of them is actually doing pretty good. They are an, an owner of an enterprise rental company, so that's that's been pretty good. But no, we're, we got the Mickey suite. We're going out there. We're, we're we're setting sail out of Fort Lauderdale, um, and it's a three week Mickey brew like kind of like booze cruise kind of thing. So we're pretty stoked on it. That's sweet, man. You see uh, all these TikToks from these swingers cruises, <clears throat> from the swinger cruises. Yeah, where there's like um, yeah, there was one couple that went viral, sort of. Because what they're just is it just people just fucking on cruises? Why why wouldn't you do that? Is that is that just a regular cruise, dude? Right, yeah. or is it specifically like, hey, this is advertised as like you're going to be doing some dirty fucking with some strangers on this cruise? No, it's advertised that way. Can you look it up? The Temptation Cruise. Oh, Temptation! What a great name for a boat to crash and sink into the ocean. <laughs> Just think about how many old people, like senile people, would book this, thinking that it's the actual Temptations, and they just show up, and it's a bunch of people jizzing on each other. <laughs> I wonder how that fucks with how the how the jisms float in the in the uh, pipe system of the cruise when it's going left and right and stuff. Oh, uh, man. I imagine this boat is pretty stinky. I imagine it's like, you know, 
previously utilized Carnival Cruise, and then it's it's like on a loan out, and they're like, yeah, this is one of our most uh, jizzy ships. So, the Temptation. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> How did you find out about this, dude? How did I find about this? Oh, me and Alina, we were looking at tickets. It'd be so funny, dude, if you guys actually went on a swinging cruise. <laughs> The other thing is, you know, it's fucked up, but I think that, like, Alina would just be getting piped down, and you just, like, would be in the corner, like, too upset to actually enjoy on the swingers fun. No, come on, man. I'd be in there. We'd be in there like a tag team. <laughs> she, take, she takes it, then you take it? Yeah. Okay, that's cool. No, no, no. Like, like we have the couple, like, pinned down in the middle of something. All right, get... dude. First off, whatever you, let's, let's not say pinned down. No, pin, right. pin down, that, pinned down. See, that, that 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 feels a bit aggressive. No, no, no. It's like a BDSM thing. Like they're willingly tied up in the middle of our because you know, me and Alina, sure. we would uh, we probably rent out our own space. We probably what would that what, what would your area be called? Would it be like an event? Yeah, yeah. It'd be called uh, call it? the, the Punisher Dome. And uh, Punisher Dome. Yeah, I didn't know you were into BDSM like that, dude. I mean, just on the swingers cruises, you know, because it's it's kind of a. It, Alina and I are pretty competitive, so we kind of want to leave as many people like rawed out as possible. So, um, whether it's toys, <laughs> whips. Did I send you that when uh, Bad Dragon took me and Nick out to the adult, like the porn awards, or whatever? Uh, Did I send you that video of Nick getting whipped? No. And this is going to be in a lawsuit for sure in the future when Nick sues me one day. <laughs> I recorded him that, that like he got tied up to this fucking bracket. Here, I'll send it to you right now. He got tied up to this bracket <laughs> and was whipped by this old woman. Oh no! It was it, it was insane, and I, I was like looking at, it. I was like recording it, and I'm kind of laughing, and then I just sat there, and it's fucked up. I still held the camera up, but I was like, this is gonna be bad. Like in the future, I know that this is going to come back and haunt me somehow. I don't know how, why. He's not naked or anything, but it's just yeah. his like very tiny body tied up. And he was like, oh, well, I guess I could do it if you need me to. I'm like, okay, first of all, I don't need you to, like, get whipped, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that, he, uh, part of me thinks he kind of wanted to. So here's one photo of him getting tied up, and then there's the actual video of him actually getting whipped. It is actually, it's kind of, I mean, like, it's fucked. Yeah, there's send no, it to me. Yeah, I just sent it to you. There's no real way for me to say that, like, having this on my phone feels good because it doesn't. Oh, my God. <laughs> And we're not going to play this. No, we're not going to play this. Yeah, we're, we're not, not even going to let this. the audio go. Oh my gosh, man! Well, she's kind of got some swag to it. Yeah, the way her hand is positioned, she does look like kind of like a. This uh, this is almost like what they do to you when you walk into like a Hawaiian resort. You know, if these were just like palm leaves rather than leather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. After they're done, they put on that like yeah. that, that flower necklace and like mahalo. Yeah, like, <laughs> this is just the mahalo treatment, man. <laughs> look, she's kind of gentle by the end of it. <laughs> it's the first couple that look bad because it like kind of catches his hair and it looks like he's getting electrocuted. But then after that, it's all good. She only gets him bad a couple times, but still, it's just the thing of like he's locked in there. Yeah, and he, he wasn't tall enough either for it really. So he's like, he had to like kind of like reach up, and it was just this whole thing. They're both very short. Yeah, it was, just, it was a whole thing. I was you know. Also, the porn awards too. I was like, this is this place was crazy. I, I was just looking at the floor the whole time. This looks probably like what the Temptation Cruise felt like, unironically. Like this fucking carpet. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine that, but then you're like swaying left to right. Yeah. On your on your uh from from the ocean. <laughs> Getting whipped in the back yeah, while many, swaying on the ocean. How many of those yeah, on the ocean? How many of those swingers showed up, man, and just got motion sick as hell? And they just fucking just vomiting and must have been so hot. All that puke. Makes you think about it. I did a video on cruises because cruises are the worst vacation. Yeah. Which is so funny because I, <clears throat> which I, I've been on a cruise myself and I, I'll never go back. Um, yeah. I'll never go back. But what, what was there the was a, a thing called the poop cruise, which is pretty funny where it's like the, the while they were on the ocean, um, the sewer system broke out and poop was just like coming out of people's toilets and people had to sleep in like hallways and stuff like that. <laughs> people had to poop in orange bags. It was really funny. It's a really disgusting story, but yeah, people had to like sleep outside. It was fucked. <laughs> and then like they got they got caught off current or something like that. So then they had, they had the the trip had to be extended two days. Oh, they could, like, amazing! Be dragged back to port. Oh, it was fucked. Amazing. Yeah. And then that's the re no. th then that's what they repurpose for the uh, for the uh, Jizzy cruise. The Jizzy cruise. I it's, I think the the two to stay away from are Carnival. 
And uh, I think it was Royal Caribbean. Those are the two that had the most how many other up stuff having them. How many other cruise brands are there? I thought those were the two. There's actually, well, I think those are the two main ones, but I think mm-hmm. like there's some bougie ones out there. Oh, God. I think it. I've I haven't heard a lot of bad things about Disney cruises. Yeah. You know, if you want to do Disney. You going um, to Disney anytime soon? <clears throat> no. Mm-mm. I don't even know when I'm going back to California. I have no idea when I'm ever going to go back to California. <laughs> I have no idea. What could get you? No idea. What would it take you? What would it take to get you out of bed to go to California? Huh? Hey, a friend's invitation. Hey, man, you want to come out? Yeah. No, not <laughs> with that kind of deal. It'd have to be a little more organic than that to me. Just like being a battered housewife asking like her husband to have dinner with her. Hey, bitch, you want to come out and to California for once? Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, you fucking dumb bitch. You want to come see me or what? Yeah. Are you fine? Just fine. All right. Fine. All right. Wear that thing I like. It's a Tasmanian devil shirt and trip <laughs> pants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wear that thing I like. <laughs> and make sure your toes are visible. It's a 6XL Tasmanian devil t shirt that I use as a dress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And sandals and open toe sandals. Yeah, open toe sandals that like definitely should have been thrown away six <laughs> years ago. Yeah. You on the flight f- you on the flight in that t shirt, they're like, Oh my god, I've never seen Dude, something. I wouldn't like, wear it on the fucking plane. I change when I'm there. Are you oh, kidding me? And then I'd be so angry at the airport if you don't have it on when I see you. I'd wear a uh I'd wear a tuxedo on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Which is even some boarded a plane with a tuxedo on. I'd be like, "What? What? What is? What is this man doing?" Yeah. You, you ever seen a? You ever caught a, um, like an organ transport on an airplane? You ever seen that? No, no. I saw that. Did they have the cooler or something? Or yeah, what? yeah. I saw that once. It was insane. Did you kick it over? I, I mean, I was just thinking about all kinds of shit. Him just tripping. <laughs> like he sets it down to like ask the gate agent a question. Someone like flings it open and just snatches it. <laughs> I wonder if there would ever do you think there would ever be a thing where if you if they upcharge planes to where there's not as many seats right but yeah. you're still making you're making more than your other plane right like they would be they'd be expensive tickets but yeah you'd have more leg room and there would be an actual alley that you could walk down to go use the restroom so you don't have to crawl over someone's lap yeah do you think that that would do you think people would do you think those planes would sell out quick um no, I think the majority of people are like, that's the thing is every flight is just 10 guys flying on a corporate account. And then the rest of the plane being like, yeah, I got to go see my aunt. She has cancer or, yeah. um, you know, we just had a newborn and we got to take him to see my dad because he's about to die. You know, what I hate though. I hate whenever I'm on a plane and I'm going to some place that's a kind of a tourist destination mm. and they're dressed for it already. Or just like there's like a level of optimism uh, that yeah. like someone's excited. I'm like, what the fuck? You're not going to have fun here, dude. I've been saving up for a long time to go out and fucking like, especially like Vegas where people are like all optimistic. They're like, I might be the one make it big. And then whenever you fly out of that motherfucker, that's the most depressing, sad, angry flight ever. <laughs> yeah. The flight out of Vegas always is so funny. It's just quiet. No one has shit to say. Super, super fucking quiet. Well, that's kind of what's <laughs> fucked up with like LA. Is that like LA is kind of that way of like usually people? It's a lot of people that uh, I've seen a, a few where people are just like, "Yep, I'm just moving out there." Or yeah, something like that. you know, like there's like that kind of level of optimism. Yeah, but those flights out of LA, man. It's like it, it's almost like uh, it's like I've always I've legitimately always seen it as like uh, like a helicopter coming to pick up people in Vietnam. Yeah, like they're out. They're safe finally. Yeah. Motherfuckers are like hyperventilating on the plane and shit. Time to go home, eat a yeah, regular looking, meal. Like, closing the windows, refusing to look at it, shell shocked. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough city, man. It's hard to survive out here, man. Yeah. LA's brutal. LA is is it's a soul crushing environment. It's the like, juxtaposition between LA and New York is really funny. There's like two major cities. Yeah. New York feels like, um, I don't know, old, grizzled, tough, right? Yep. And L- LA feels very, uh, I don't like, like, like a little, like a little baby, like a, like a clean little baby. Yep. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, L- yeah. L.A. is to me is like uh, is is like that scene from the Chelsea Handler show, or was it? I don't know. No, I don't, I don't know I, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. It was uh, was it was it the Sasha Baron Cohen show where he like walks in and he brings Chelsea Handler in? I think, and all his furniture is um, <laughs> Latino people. Oh, Paul Abdul. Paul, Abdul, yeah, 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 yeah. That to me is like the quintessential. Uh, that's L.A. That's fully L.A. Yeah. Yep. 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 Well, soft. I'll tell you what. Speaking of L.A. and filmmaking, I just filmed. A, I filmed something last night. Ooh, I did it finally after all this time. I think we started this. What we started this podcast three years ago, and I was yeah. like, I mean, films. I finally did it. What'd you do? What'd you shoot it on? You'll have to see. Oh, oh I, sh- I shot it on a Sony A seven S three, but I use cinema lenses. Nice anamorphic what, lenses. What, so, uh, what yeah, lenses, Dad? What lenses? I think they're DZO. Oh, oh, the DZOs. Yeah, those are fun. Those are yeah, good way to break it in. Do you still have that um, DJI Probably camera? Did. Well, hey, come on, man, don't. Don't make me feel bad. You know, break it in. Come on, man. Like, I, mean, I get, I get, I get. It's my first one, but dude, you really had to. You couldn't just let me have that, could you? You had to like really be sure. Yeah, you'll you'll get your way up there. Yeah, man. Work. Don't worry, man. You'll get you'll get to your own set of you know. This one will look like shit. It's all right. No. Um, and we'll uh, we'll no. get you some good ones soon. I've I've shot stuff on DZOs. I like them. All right. That must uh, have been years ago, though, right? No, it was literally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> literally like four yeah, literally months ago. 26 2017 yeah, like somewhere like there. 2012 i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was like 2012 2013 yeah because i remember we were filming with them we were joking about how the mayan said that the world was supposed to end and yeah. stuff so when was the yeah, 2012 yeah 2012. 2012 yeah um what were you saying before i rudely interrupted you no 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 um what damn it i just forgot i just forgot oh yeah do you still have your dji camera yeah, um, that's. Want to get one of those fucking pocket ones, dude? You see that new one that came out? Oh yeah, the Pocket Three. I have one. Do you have the one where you flip it? Yeah, you flip yeah. the screen. That shit's sick. I yeah. tried getting one, but it said it was six months back ordered. Dude, it's crazy. Well, I I just got... wait for it to get on Amazon in a couple of years, I guess. Yeah, they went back. They're back in stock now. Oh wait, no, on they... Amazon. No. Yeah, I buy my stuff from B and H actually, so I don't actually support Bezos. <laughs> they were uh, they came back in stock on Best Buy, and I snatched one up. No, but if dude, uh, more people are starting to use the uh, the camera you bought. I thought you bought the big like cinema rig. Yeah, it is the, the Ronin. Yeah, cover, mm-hmm. with the gimbal. Yeah, the problem is there's just not enough good lenses right now. Like they're yeah. very limited on lenses, and you have yeah. to get. Yeah, and there, I, it's just the whole thing, but it, it's a cool camera. I just but I thought DZO makes like a I thought like they make a really lightweight anamorphic that works well on that. I don't know. I'm not being ironic. I'd have, I'm, I'd I'm have being to look serious. into it more. I've just gotten I just got like a three lens kit thing. Yeah, no, I think um, I'm pretty sure the that DZO's um, anamorphics. Some of these are like really light. Um, and they're pretty great for uh, specifically like Ronin gimbals. Um, Ronin. Ronin gimbal. So yeah, maybe this could enable you to put it to use. No, why don't you pitch me a movie? Pitch me a movie right now. All right. I'm a movie producer. I'll say this. I'll say, okay. hey, I love your stuff, man. Um, we're looking for kind of a rom-com mm-hmm. about a girl whose boyfriend gets turned into a gecko it's kind of where this is where it's where our algorithm says that people are really biting right now mm-hmm. do you have any ideas to fit that um do you want me to say just first off wrong you should say of course it yes i do <laughs> that should be the, that should be the first response just to let you know for pitch meetings go ahead oh no because i you took the words right out of my mouth i, I was uh I was sitting there thinking I was going to say, mm, that sucks. How about we do something else? Oh, well, I'm the person, I'm the movie producer, so. Yeah, but you. I'm the guy who's going to give you money to make this shit. Yeah, but. Do you know how it works in this town? You're just a guy. You know, I'm the yeah. artist. That's why I'm here. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, Listen, man, how about this? How about we make an hour and a half long movie? 
And it's just you doing lines off my cock. Hmm. Is this still the pitch meeting or is this you talking to me as a, like a regular person? This is just me talking to you as a regular person or it could be a pitch. Oh, okay. So we, so we're, so we're just completely skipping past the prompt that I get. Okay. Um, yeah, man, that sounds good. I'd love to do that. And that ladies and gentlemen is a lesson in improv. That was a little bit of, yes, I would love to do lines off your cock. That's something that you learn at groundlings here in LA. It's an improv school. I don't know if you've uh, ever heard of it. If you haven't, you're probably some fucking idiot in a town that doesn't have any real creativity. So, I've only ever uh, heard of Second City. Mm, yeah. So that's just because everyone's like, Chris Farley went there. Yeah. That's all I ever know. So I, I don't, I, I'm sure there's other troop, but that's the only one I know. Second City. Right, sue me. Sue me. Groundlings. Oh, oh, dude, we're taking you to court. We're definitely taking you to court. I've been trying to sign up for an improv class to be better. At improv, <laughs> and then Nick was like, "Can I? Can I join you?" I said, he said "Hell yeah!" So I think me and him are actually going to take improv classes here very soon. Uh, I would love to see you two in an improv class. Why do I feel like that was directed with more hate than love? No, because I would love to see whatever Nick comes up with, and then <laughs> I can just imagine you in the crowd just fucking with that soft head shake. <laughs> I think he's going to do very well, and I think I have a feeling I'm going to do I'm going to do very well also. Yeah, I'm going to sharpen my tools to become an improv warrior. All right. Um, would you say then, if in in an improv scenario, would you say this is a gun? Sure. Wrong. This is a gun. What is the other one? This is me about to finger blast someone on the temptation cruise are the is the 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 so for people who's who's listening to this for some reason they he put up his fingers in a gun shape and he said that's not the thing and then he did he did it as if he was holding a a gun and he had his finger on the trigger and he said that's a gun yeah. is it did you learn this in improv school unironically i was i was actually uh talking with someone two nights ago and they said that they did improv they did uh groundlings and the scenario did incorporate a gun. He did that. And they like yelled at him and they said, this is a gun actually. So yes. Hmm. Yeah. I'd be like, why are we getting hung up on the semantics of what's a, a fictitious gun in my hand? <laughs> he if said, I was like holding a bazooka, I could see that being like, okay, dude, come on, let's make it just like a handgun. Yeah. I think that's bullshit. I'd be like, this is, this is a fucking gun. <laughs> I pull out a real gun. I put it against his temple. <laughs> what is this? What is this? <laughs> I don't fucking. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. What is it? It's a. It's a gun. It's a gun. Okay, it's a fucking gun. <laughs> and I'm like, scene. And I fucking bash the side of his head open with it, and the whole crowd's like, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm crazy! I'm fucking crazy!" As I keep yelling, <laughs> that feels pretty good, right? I think that was awesome, man. I think you got it. What's the I would love for someone to give me the opportunity to, to try to dramatically act in a in a movie. Sorry, when you did that, you just made me think of um, Michael Douglas and falling down. <laughs> I would love to be Michael du falling down rules. I would love to be Michael Douglas and falling down. <laughs> that scene where he fucking just, I mean, terrorizes the McDonald's. Why not, dude? Catharsis. Let a couple of them fly. Yeah. That's that should be if if you're an incel listening to this and you're just like I hate I hate where I'm at in my life, watch falling down. <laughs> watch falling down, dude. You'll feel real fucking you'll be hyped. I want to be in a dramatic I want to be a dramatic um actor. Okay. I would I don't want to act in a comedy, I want to act dramatically. I want people to see my range. All right. What's what, fucked up uh, is I don't role, even, I don't what, think I know my range. What entirely. role would you would you go for? What's a dramatic any. role that you think? No, 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 not any. Oh, pick, pick one. Like a role from. Well, a if film. I was an if I, if my agent was like, here's shoot out some headshots. You know what? I, th I think I would honestly, I would get ta casted in roles that like Philip Seymour Hoffman got casted. Oh, I could see that. I could see myself being kind of at first the schlubby kind of guy, whatever, and then in my, in my older years, I get turned more into 
um, a more inquisitive type of man, a more, you know, a, a disturbed older man who you can tell has gone through years of abuse with his body and mind. Right. I feel like I would, I would, I would, I feel like I would do that, but I would honestly, I would be, I would take any role. I would, I would love the challenge. Hmm. I think I, I, there's a dramatic role I think you could do. Which role? You're the nutty professor. <laughs> and I would play all the roles, including uh, the live at love interest, which I'm pretty sure is Jada Smith, whatever. Yeah. That fucking monster. Is that, is that her? I'm pretty sure that's her, right? Let me see. Nutty professor. Nutty professor. The love interest is Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah, that fucking absolute monster. Except in my version, I say, hey, Baldy, get lost! That's what I say. Well, Bob, this is my uh, Sherman Clump. Is his name Sherman Clump? Right? Yes. Crump. Sherman Clump. 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 Well, I'm a Sherman Clump. Man, what a movie. Yeah, dude. Eddie's got a Fuck crazy him. catalog, bro. Eddie Murphy? Yeah. Yeah, no drama roles on there, though, right? No. Yeah. Unlike my boy Sandler, my boy Sandler bridges the gap. He's able to, <laughs> he's able to get there in terms of goofy ass fucking comedy movie people. Yeah. Let's see, Sandler's most dramatic role. Oh, I finally watched Iron Punch Cl Drunk Love, probably oh, or probably yeah. Punch Drunk Love is his most dr dramatic. I would say. I finally watched Iron Claw. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. What'd you think? Um, I liked it. I got teary eyed at the end. Um, I thought that the ending was nice, but I, mean, I don't know. I mean, it's just pacing away where I was like, the time skips were a bit yeah. all over the place and shit. I didn't feel like it really, and I'll say it, I'll say it right now. I didn't think any of the deaths were that impactful. No. It's kind of like, oh, they're, they're dropping like flies, these Von Eriks. I felt that too. I would have, I honestly would have preferred just like a documentary instead. <laughs> Well, I've seen the Dark Side of the Ring documentary. Oh, I'm gonna tragic. watch. I'm gonna watch that next. I'm really, really keen. It's good. I also wish I was like, which you know, hey, it's movie magic, right? Yeah. But every single Von Erich in real life is six foot five. I, I and, do. And, and dude. every single Jeremy Allen White, I'm pretty sure, is four foot ten, and Zach Efron is five foot two. Took the so words was, out of my mouth, man. It was kind of fucked up. Him walking around, and then you have like the Giga Chad dad who's just like, I fucking hate all of you, except yeah. I do love you. I'm the tallest member of this family, even though in real life he was the shortest. Yeah. So I just think, I just think to myself, hmm. That's what I think to myself, hmm. Well, actually, that's not how it would actually be. <laughs> I well, snicker to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, a real wrestling fan, know how it would I, really be. <laughs> I have a subscription to Vice, and I saw the dark side of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw the Von Erich episode, and this doesn't really quite add up. <laughs> the director said that, um, first of all, they this script has been around for like five years or, or something, something longer, the, the one they were trying to sell. Um but the director said that they didn't include Chris Von Erich, the youngest one, committing suicide, because yeah. he was like, "Oh, the film." It was like one too more, sad. yeah, like two, yeah. But I was like, "You didn't really show, like, when the dude died." Well, in dude, Tokyo, I'm like, "You're already showing three other fucking brothers." I know. It's flies. just like, just put in the other fucking guy. Are you kidding me? Come yeah, on. Nah. They showed him at the end, didn't they? He's like a little, he's like a little boy, and they carry him. And they go. No, no, no. That's the first son. It was it's Jack Jr. and then technically the Von Erich family. It was Jack Jr. and then three of four boys. Uh, or no, 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 three committed suicide and then Mike. Um. So it, there were actually five children in the movie. They only show four. I tell you what, documentary fucked me up about wrestling was the Andre the Giant documentary. Oh yeah, why? Just sad. Big fucking big man kept growing. World was too small for me. I had to fly over the place. Fucking it just it, it, it tore me up. I was sad. I was mm. a sad man. Mm. He's a big guy. He's like, I just want to love. Yeah. You'd say, I just want to love. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's a very good documentary though. It's it's really good. It's fun. Yeah, I'm kind of like I'm I wanna I'm keen on a bit more of this like 
the sadder parts of uh, pro wrestling. Do you think there's like, would you say there's any other... You're keen on the sad parts of wrestling? Yeah, just like the business aspect and like, because I know the business side of wrestling can be really shitty and I, mm. I, I'm i kind of fascinated by that. Like, okay. What, it, tell me if you agree with this. I feel like wrestling is unique because it's one of the few, if not the only like performance mediums where like if you get popular, you can like leverage that, like leveraging a character to get more for yourself. Does that make sense? I don't feel like you can really do that in anything else. Like in other industries, I feel like they can kind of like blackball you, but wrestling has like that cult following where you can muscle people into doing what you need kind of. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but wrestling. I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to even just keep up with what you're saying. I mean, like for I guess, I guess, like in terms of like, I mean, it, it, in terms of performance art, actual performance art and stuff, it's the only thing to this scale that I think is also at a level of like uh, that's at this scale. Yeah, like at this scale, like you're not, you're not gonna see. Like, imagine if like, uh, which I guess you could say, you know. <laughs> Other professional sports might be rigged to an extent, but yeah, there's an actual amount of performance and script and chore- choreography that goes into the wrestling stuff or yeah. whatever. So I yeah. don't know. I don't know, dude. I guess what I mean by that is like, if if The Rock wants more money or he wants something different, he's so popular that he could be like, "You need to do this," and the business may have to give in into that. Whereas, like with football you could be a star running back and you're like, I want this much money. And they're like, maybe not. And they'll just cut you and, and figure it out kind of thing. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, you're probably right. Uh, yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. So I don't know. I, and I guess like how the business like evolves to that point, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of like interested if there's like more material about that. Cause wrestling feels, I mean, all entertainment has shitty aspects to it, but I don't know why wrestling to me feels uniquely shitty. Because it feels like a lot of like local beefs that kind of like evolve into bigger things. I don't know. It's very like dog eat dog, which is uh, I don't know. I'm fascinated by it. What can I? I say? used to have a uh, wrestling ring, toy ring, mm-hmm. uh, that I used to have. So usually, you know, that's like that's what I got for that. I had a Stone Cold action figure, and I think his name was Kane. I had Kane, Kane, and Stone, and Stone Cold, and I would. I had a big obnoxious fucking ring that I set on the ground and I would like uh I would wrestle these men around. And then my dad came in and he was like, What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And I was like, uh, this and then I I remember I was really devastated because the same week that my dad took away my Sergeant Chip Hazard action figure. Yeah. And he took away Archer from both of those characters from Small Soldiers. Yeah. And then I got these, these these wrestlers from my cousin, and he took those away, and he just gave me a BB gun. I was like, I don't want, I don't want the BB gun. <laughs> I want the men in tights, Dad. I want the men in tights to wrestle around. I'm my, having fantasies. I had to like, I had to watch wrestling at other people's houses or in secret. I never really wanted to watch it. I thought watching it was fucking boring. My friend had some of the video games, and even the video games were clunky and dog shit. Mm. I just like the 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 personas and like the the action figures and stuff. Or like I I like the the image of it all, but I didn't really I'd like never wanted to actually watch it or anything. Yeah. And it wasn't until I started watching these documentaries and shit that I actually started getting some interest in all that shit. Not, not, not even interest, but I just think wrestling people have like the best fucking documentaries because they're all just like drug addicts, drunks, and steroid yeah. junkies. Yeah. And it was all at a time when it was just like you had to be big, brother. Yeah. And it was just that kind of stuff where it's them hopping around all these different cities and stuff and doing all kinds of crazy shit. Mm-hmm. And also just the amount of like physical uh ab- like abuse that your body goes through to be in these matches and shit is pretty crazy. Yeah, no. Nah, the the I feel you on like the actual <laughs> matches being a little bit boring. I I like I enjoyed them as a kid. Um but yeah, the the lore of all the characters was was always enough to carry me through even the shitty games that was enough to carry me through um (laughs) yeah my fucking my parents didn't like wrestling because they were like this is gonna make you violent (laughs) so stupid i remember i went over to one of my friend's house one time and he had one of those plastic wwe belts 
Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I got to stop hanging out with this motherfucker immediately. <laughs> he had like hanging on his, he had hanging on his closet door. And I was like, I was like, what, what, what is this? Oh, it's the championship belt. Okay. <laughs> Are we gonna fucking are we are we going downstairs and playing Mario Party or not? What yeah. fuck, what is happening right now? You guys are like fucking twenty two. It's yeah, like dude. way we're twenty we're two. I could have swore I was like I, I was like nine. I, it was the most vindictive nine year old moment I've ever had in my life. Yeah, I mean like I like border. I was like I think my stomach hurts, and I called my mom and I was like, "Pick me up now." <laughs> oh my God. I need to get I need to get the fuck out. <laughs> this kid's a fucking dork. I gotta bail. This kid's a dork, dude. He's like his room's all fucking messy and stuff, and the only thing that's prim and proper in his room are like WWE posters and this fucking toy this toy championship belt that he's like holding up to be real. Yeah. And he's like telling me about all like these different facts and stuff. I'm like, dude, I don't fucking care. I'm nine. Yeah. Like I want to hear about it. I'm like, let's talk you want do you like Dragon Ball Z? No, Willie. Okay. Well, what I mean, what what do I what, what do we have in common here besides you owning a Nintendo sixty four? Like what 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 can we do to break bread and be friends? As a kid, did you have any po- like did you have any posters of like absolutely male idols? Absolutely, uh. I had the Mark McGuire Got Milk poster on the back of my door. Okay, and it didn't really dawn on me. I think I was like twelve, and I was like, this looks this feels like oddly like. If I was a homosexual child, I would probably be doing some things because he's buff and his arms out and he's like kind of flexing and he has like all this white shit all over his mouth. That's right. a, that is literally the poster I had right there. Yeah. Yeah. For a child to have that on his door, I was I was getting all kinds of mixed feelings. I'm like, I don't people people sit there and, you know, they're like, oh, this chick's hot. And I'm like, does she look better than Mark McGuire on the back of my door? And I don't know. I doubt it. <laughs> You know, I was all kind of, I think that, I think I was about ready to be swayed either side. I was, I was, hey, I was a switch hitter back then is what I would say. Yeah. Some would say Mark was a switch hitter in that poster as well. Oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. That was the last time the, the Major League Baseball was fun. It was all the steroid guys. Yeah. Well, Pete, what happened with Pete Rose? Didn't he like? Probably fucking died. I don't know what the fuck. God, what, what, what did Pete, where did Pete Rose even play? No, the fucking sixties. Uh, I don't know. I just know he was a baseball legend, and I only know that because when I worked at Best Buy, he came in to buy a TV, and we had this fucking manager who was just losing it. Like, dude, that's fucking Pete Rose. Oh my god! And he gave him like a big ass discount on his purchase, just to I don't know, kiss his ass. And then the dude got fired for the level of discount he gave him. Thank you, young man, for the TV. Make sure to approach life with every base hit that you can. That's awesome, Pete Rose. Thank you so much. Make sure to get a ground rule double in life. Yeah, I, I will, Pete. Thanks so much. Make sure to make sure to slide the second. <laughs> Straight to unemployment after that shit, dude. Hey, Pete, I actually got unemployed. I was wondering if you could help, help hook me up with another job. <laughs> you have to approach your unemployment like you just hit the biggest home run of your life. <laughs> That's yeah, a double play scenario, son. Have a good day. God, bro. And P. Rose is still alive. Wow. Who cares, dude? He's dead. He's dead in our eyes. All our viewers won't give a fuck. He's theoretically dead. How old is he? 98? Um, Close. 82. 82. Yeah. Gross, right? Yeah. Disgusting age. Honestly, old people are nasty, man. I know. They smell fucking weird. It's the decay. Yeah. That's the fucked up thing. It's whenever you go into like, when you go into like a nursing home, it's definitely like shit and piss or whatever, but there is like a level of decay. Yeah. It's like smelling like a fucking, it's like smelling like a 14 year old, like golden retriever or yeah. something. You can just tell like that motherfucker's rotten on the inside. Yeah. It just cells dying. You could just has mm. <laughs> gases and there's like literally nothing left to break down. So they're just like, fuck it. We're just going to tear up all the gutty works <laughs> and just, yeah, just like a hot air balloon of just toxic gas. And it's just leaking through the skin because the skin is just on its last leg. <laughs> just, we can't, we can't even hold the fucking contents in anymore, champ. What year? What, what age would you like to die? I mean, would you be like, you know what? That was, it was. It, it, this is fine. I'm okay with this. It's tough to say because I'm young, and so 
I'm going to say like, I don't want to die, but I'm sure if I can't like walk or if I'm just slow to do shit, I'll probably just be thinking, man, just, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's going to be a joyous day. I'm just saying you could just be like, well, fuck dude. I mean like this is a, this is a fine age. I'm not going to say that you're like willing or happy about it. I'm just saying like, I think for me, uh, for me, I always said, I always said 80, I said 85. If I could get to 85, I feel like that would be, that's like a healthy thing. Cause it, cause if you, it's like, it's a weird thing. Somebody dies at 70. You're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. You die at 60. Oh, they're still kind of young. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You die at eight, you, if you're in your eighties, they're just like, that is a nice long life. Yeah. Is what people say, you know, they have fucked up. That is a spectrum of like, of you, you see somebody die in their seventies. And they're like, Oh my God, what? Yeah. Wow. That's it. You know, well, I guess they were, old. I get like they say that I guess you were old as if it's like sympathy. I, they were old. Yeah. Right. 60s is like he must have been like he was really unhealthy and just like it was his fault yep 80s that's when it's nice like it was a nice long life and then 90 is like get come on man <laughs> you're being well, 90s now. 90s is awesome because 90s and into 100s they're just like oh my god wow good for them wow i looked at it the other way like the family's like just let go Oh yeah, I mean, like if my mom lives to be like in her nineties, I'm never seeing her. Like that whole decade, I'll see her when she hits a hundred again. But like as soon as that bitch turns ninety, I'm like, well, I'll see you in ten years, hopefully. Good luck. I'm like, oh, I'm putting the minimum amount of money into this. I'm like, this is if, in terms of insurance companies, you are a liability. All right, I'm not gonna sink all this shit. Also, it's like people are like, I put them in the nicest home, right? Yeah. I put him in the nicest home. I'm like, if you're 90, do you even, can you even comprehend? You're like in like baby form again. Yeah. It'd be like, it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, you ever see somebody throw like a huge extravagant birthday party for a two year old? And you're like, do you realize they're never going to remember this? Yeah. This is this, like, this is a party for yourself. Yeah. Which is why I'm like, put all this money into like, hey, we made it two years with this fucking, this little uggo that we call a kid. Right. Yeah. So that's why I was like, when my mom celebrates her 90th birthday, I'm throwing that party for myself. <laughs> hey, we did it. We we made it through. We made it through the tough years, and now she's delusional. Yeah, she's not even going to be there because she, she won't even she won't even know what her birthday is. Just the fuck was it yesterday? <laughs> no, remember we all came by and we we all came by and we were hanging out. Remember? Oh, that's right. Because they never want to admit that they're wrong, that they're yeah. that they're actually going insane. Yeah, but that plays into your favor, which is nice. Yeah, just the grandma from Mars Attacks. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's right. Just getting wheeled around. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think, um, yeah, I think you're right. I think 80s, late 70s to 80s, that's probably, probably a good time to wrap it up. Imagine if, imagine, then this is not going to happen because I've just, I've tortured my body too much and my body's like, there's no way, but imagine I live to be 120. Because you say like you don't plan on it i feel like it'll happen to you that's the most fucked up thing is like all these people that like they spend their life doing all these like physical activities and they like you know they work really hard and they're really healthy yeah those motherfuckers drop like flies us yeah. us fucking troglodytes who are eating like microplastics and stuff yeah that's the second stage of evolution <laughs> well zayat has a great bit about that he's like all these people that eat clean and exercise every day, they're the ones that like get hit by a bus when they're on their fucking road bike. <laughs> Probably true. But he's like, but the ones it, that live to a hundred, they're like, Oh my god, what's your secret? And they're like they're like speaking I was on through my a couch watching movies. Yeah, they're like, they're like speaking through a stoma, like I drank whiskey every day. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. No, it's true, bro. Yeah, and dude, all these like all these billionaires that are like, I'm exper I'm I'm biohacking. I'm gonna live till I'm whatever. Yeah, what is the the blood transfusion or like the young blood? It's like a it's a blood boy. They're blood boys, whatever. And then they they take somebody who's like really healthy, and then they yeah. they 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 put their blood inside them. I'm like, I don't know if it's is it the blood that's just getting old? Like, are they doing? That's like a Jiffy Lube oil test. Yeah, They're like changing their oil. But I'm like, I think it's your actual organs, dude. Yeah. What if you could? Could you go in and just put in new organs everywhere? I don't think so because there's something that's like. No. I forget what it is when you age. It's like literally this cell that keeps breaking down until you die when it can't like 
it, it keeps breaking down. It makes your skin sag, all that kind of shit. Well, you try to put in, a, you try to put some young suspension in there. And your body usually, I think, it just like rejects it. Like that's the biggest thing when people undergo like that's fu- fucked up organ swaps. It'll be like, ooh, it rejected the liver. He fucking died on the table, you know, or whatever. Yeah. So it's kind of fucked up. They put you on a table still, right? Yeah. <laughs> How, what else would you do, though? You kind of need to be on know, a table. I was like thinking about it. I'm like, there's got to be something more respectful than a fucking table now. Res- I mean, like, yeah. like a queen size bed. Yeah, I see he, what you he mean. He died in his bed. He died yeah. in the bed. Yeah. That feels better than he died on the table. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that kind of fucked up? We got to re- We got to figure out something else besides the table. I'm actually kind of curious. What would be something good to, to... What's like a respectful thing? He died... We, we we perform surgeries on like the altar. What if it was a giant, beautiful, marble sculpted altar? Yeah. Now is the surface flat, or does it have uh, does it have like bedding? You know, is it soft? I think it's. I think it depends on the doctor. Okay. I think that I think a lot of people prefer to do flat and hard because uh-huh. it's a stable surface. Yeah, but I can see some people having a bit of respect, and they're just like, put a little cushion under them. <laughs> let, let their, let, you know, they're not going to wake up like they're going to wake up because they're and their stomach's going to hurt because they had appendicitis and I had to take out their appendix. But I don't want their back hurting. You know what I mean? <laughs> just picturing a dude swapping out a heart and like he lays out the fucking the soft mat. You know, and then yeah. the soft mat just gives a little bit when they go for the incision, and that's what fucks up the cut. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, fuck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just fucking oops. <laughs> Rolls out his y- fucking yoga mat he used this morning in hot yoga. It's just all slimy and slippery. <laughs> yeah, man. Anyways, guys, oh, that's yeah. the episode. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>